Right, we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I am with the wonderful Thomas Sawyer, um, which we will hear from, who we'll hear from shortly. Um, but we'll just take a bit of time to share out. Feel free to share out as well. Thank you. Oh, I need a look. I need my We'll just wait for people to pop on. Yeah, we good. Hello, everyone. We're, Jimmy is doing an interview with me today. Cody had to cancel, so we are live. I have some questions. I have some questions written down, and I have some questions that are not written down. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Who is um? Whoever said good morning, gentlemen? Um, is just coming up with Facebook user. Can you go on either mine or Thomas's page, uh, and watch this live from there? Because I think they must be in a group and um, StreamYard and Facebook. Oh, is that you, Ada? Hey, Ada. Hey, Kathy. I'll let you read me in the comments. Okay. Yeah, I'll um, I'll 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 pin or I'll, I'll highlight along the bottom any comments that are necessary. Do you want to take comment? Do you want to take questions from from people who are watching, or should I? Do you want to do yeah, them as yeah. well? Yeah, send them. All right. So, you're plugging this phone while you're while you're there. For those who are on at the moment watching, if you have any quid, we I'm going to be interviewing Thomas today. Um, because the guy who we were going to interview, Cody, unfortunately, had to cancel at the last minute. And um, so if anyone has any questions that they would like me to ask Thomas, then put them in the chat and I will um, hopefully get to them. Ah, that's better idea. Yeah, we can see. So we'll start in a minute. I've got a few questions for him. There we go. Did you want to um, introduce yourself? Well, I mean, people know who Hello, you are. Everyone. My name is Thomas Sawyer. I'm a psychic medium um, healer. Uh, I like to use the word exorcist because it's just so insane. <laughs> and, but I am technically an exorcist. So, well, I am an exorcist. This may be a different way of looking at it. But in the same way I'm hearing as well. So, and I do readings, Kashuk Records readings uh help people their spiritual path demon hunter as i like to say on TikTok. Mm. yeah excellent all right oh len how you doing brother i'm interviewing thomas so should we start with the questions yeah let's go for it right question number one so how was it growing up and interacting with the gifts that you have? Scary is an understatement. So as a kid, the first, I remember a lot of things before I was six years old, but I don't really recall all the memories in detail. One thing I do remember is when I was six, I saw a Native American in a full headdress standing through my coffee table when I was letting my dog in the door. And I freaked out ran up the stairs. I remember this memory detail. I thought the piano would start playing for some reason. And I ran up and told my father, I don't know what he thought to think about this. And he like checked the door and he was like, well, the door is unlocked. So maybe someone came in, but I'm like, there's no way a native American in a full headdress would be in the <laughs> house. That doesn't make sense. Mm. And later on, he told me when I was 18 that 
there was a girl because we live right next to the Cherokee Indian Wars happened. And there was a woman that came, uh, there was a little girl, three years old, that got lost in the woods. And it was in the paper, newspaper. So she had a whole story about how this Native American in a headdress led her back to the neighborhood. Oh, right. Cool. So then when I was like 12, I mean, I'd always see things that would happen before they would happen. Hmm. I didn't really understand this because I grew up very Christian. So it scared me. Um, a lot of that's probably due to my mother. She's probably going to watch this. And uh, and her Christian belief system, which is fine. Everyone can believe what they want. Still, like, there were other times where I would be like, I'd walk in the woods as a kid all the time. And I didn't really see anything. But there were certain times I would see, like, weird things coming out of the ground. Mm. Like one in particular. One time I saw a bunch of kids. I thought there were kids I knew um, because they looked like them. But they were up at the top of the hill and I was walking like this massive hill and I'm, I'm walking to go home. I had to be like 12 or something, maybe younger. And they started riding their bikes and they're saying they're going to kill me. Hmm. Which doesn't really make sense. And but I started running and I could hear them behind me, like chasing. me. And I got to the door my, and my mother was in the house and I'm crying and knocking on the door like let me in let me in they're gonna kill me and she comes and opens the door and she's like looks outside and she's like who and there's no one there <laughs> so like as a kid I was seeing all this stuff and even when I was 14 uh the first time I saw like the energy of God which is a whole nother story mm. it was like youth camp um or like a youth retreat at Mount Perrin uh, charismatic Christian and like after that I started like there was one time I, I saw like this dark entity go through the door and so I see a lot of this like really dark stuff like when I was younger but it was more I would see other stuff too I'd see ghosts and stuff mm. but I, I, I would like I didn't know what to think if that makes sense what age were you uh when you sort of first discovered you know, about the the thing you could see things and you know you could feel stuff i didn't know what to believe so even though i saw the things it was very hard for me to believe what i was saying was real mm. so I, I, probably around the age because everyone thought i was crazy back then this wasn't normal at all yeah, did, did you tell everyone about it no no <laughs> um but anyone i did i think they freaked out about it so i remember this kind of this came to my memory so a friend of mine uh he had this girlfriend for a, many many years and the girlfriend i knew i had a dream that she had cheated on so i'd be mm -hmm. about 18 and i went to him he was one of my best friends for a very very long time so i was about 36 and i was like man your girlfriend cheated on you i had this dream like, mm -hmm. I don't know what to tell you. Well, it comes back like two years later and I'm working at this place and he comes in like crying. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, shit, can I take my lunch break? And they're like, give him 30 minutes you can take. So I sat down with him and he's like, I remember you told me this two years ago. I know it's not you. And I know mm -hmm. it's not this person. I'm thinking mm -hmm. this person was obviously that person. So, but I was, he's like, you told me about this. And I was like, yeah, I, I've always had those kind of things. Mm -hmm. I'll see stuff happening way before it happens. I feel like sometimes I'll react to those situations. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I probably, what I'm hearing is sometimes I react too soon. Cause what I feel like is other, I don't mean to say like everybody, but some people haven't called up to what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. And then I might get myself in trouble for saying something too early, <laughs> <laughs> which has happened a lot, Mary, for my guys. Yeah. So, so I went into this when I was like, God, 34, it's been like 11 years. So why do you think, um, how do you think that all works then? Do you know why you see stuff before, before they happen? Do you think it, 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 what they say about the, there's only the present and everything's happening now? Um, if everything's happening now, how do we know what's going to happen? Well, I suppose, because you can jump from another timeline. Do you, what do you think about timelines? 
Uh, it's interesting. I, I kind of go with Bashar on this, even though I'm on the fence with him sometimes. I mean, I like him and part, I mm. don't agree with some things and I agree with some things. Mm. I don't dislike him. I just don't really think sometimes with him. But still, he, like, with the timeline thing, it's, I think there's a multitude of timelines that happen at any given point. Mm. Understanding those timelines and understanding why those things are happening or what could happen, because I've had clients that, or even friends that have, they're like, Thomas, I'm seeing this and this and this, mm. but like, is going to happen. And I'm like, I think you're seeing alternate timelines. Like yeah. possibilities or maybe other realities the whole multiverse thing is massive now since the first season of loki mm. but it's it's like it i'm like i think you're seeing something in another timeline like i would have a friend two years ago he's like i had this vision of you and we're in the future and everyone's shooting each other and like with guns like you're shooting at each other and i was like he goes you look like gandalf <laughs> you like wielding energy. I don't have a gun. It's like, no. I'm like, well, maybe I need a gun. No, no. Like, you you look like Neo. Like, mm. you stop bullets. I'm like, dude, that's crazy. Like, are you insane? It's like, I think you're seeing another reality. Mm. So I don't, yeah, I, I've had clients. I don't know what timelines. It's gotten so popular lately. Mm. But I, I don't know what to think of it. I know what you mean. It's like, is there one def- definitive timeline and all the others are just possibles? And, or do, do we, is it one for the collective? Is it one for everyone? Everyone's even in the same one? Or do we, are we each in our own? It's, it's just, I don't know. It's... Well, there's one interesting one, Jim. So, um, my ex, I've had some chaotic relationships. So, with one of and she was very i would say she's a little mentally unstable anyways no disrespect to her still but she was like she saw a timeline where russia bombed us Mm. she said if this person had been elected in the office and i don't she may be political but she knew her stuff i'm hearing but she's just really dark Mm. and maybe mentally unhinged a bit still she was like they that actually happened this is crazy they rewound the timeline Oh, so it right. happen. Mm. And I was like, who are they? She's very Christian. Mm. But she's she's very psychic. Anyways, so but she would see the worst things. This was kind of her MO. The worst things in people, the worst things in, that were gonna happen, mm. which tells you a lot about her behavioral pattern. Mm. But still, like, yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? I mean, I had to be like 30 six or something at the time i was like i don't know 30 i don't know how old i was i was like it's crazy you're insane <laughs> but looking back at it i'm like maybe she wasn't insane maybe that did happen and they rewound the timeline she's like this happens a lot they just rewind it and like they're like we're gonna start here let's see what happens mm. yes the 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 looking glass isn't it the the project looking glass is supposed to be the thing that they can i don't know whether you can rewind time using it because I, i've read a little bit on it but no, I don't know the, the the intimate details of it, but apparently it shows different timelines and what's the most likely one to happen. And you know, um, I don't know about time manipulation, but I mean, and the question is, who is they? Yes, that's another question. Everyone says that. Yeah. Are they extraterrestrials? Are they God? Are they? Yeah. This is what I say to my friend all this. Like they are telling me, I go, who are they? <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, they're angels. I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense because I need to know who they are. <laughs> hey, Carol. Hey, Mary. Hey, Fatima. So, speaking of angels, how is it working with angels? Uh, lately, I've kind of had this thing where there's been a lot of disclosure about UFOs. I mentioned this to Jimmy earlier before. Mm. Canada, and there's other things I've been hearing about here and there. And I'm kind of like, I, I'm kind of just sticking to angels and like the message I got was stick to certain angels and stick to certain like masters on earth. And then like the Syrians, mm. maybe some Arcturians, but like, cause the Syrians, I, I've talked to them. They're like the most advanced race in the cosmos. I don't know a lot about them, but I have gone and talked to them. So like, I feel that, I don't know. I feel like some of the ETs, 
even if they're like Palladian or something I'm hearing, mm. um, they may not be the best for you to work with because there's a lot of races up there. Mm. And what are their intent? Like it could be one intent, could be different from another's intent. If that makes sense. Mm. So, but working yeah. with angels, it's as long as you're picking the right ones, which I'm hearing just naturally gravitate towards. Because even angels, there can be some dark ones. There's different kinds of angels. You got like Hawthor angels, you can Enochian angels, like biblical angels. You could go through a whole series of angels. I've seen oh. dark angels. Mm. I don't know if I call them angels, though, I'm hearing. Mm. But I've seen what people would call darker angels. Mm. I think I would call them more like demons. I know that's like a popular term for the last 200 years. But yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Hey, Donna. Hey, Lisa. Um, like, like, obviously, they mentioned about fallen angels. So that would indicate that they. When you we see we take fallen angels and think, oh well, they must have done something bad to be fallen. But I mean, um, I don't I don't really know the story about the fallen angels. Um, but could that be a metaphor for something? Um, this is uh, it's just, this is I haven't read the Bible, um, but I know that it talks about fallen angels. I can and, tell you what I remember. <laughs> Because I remember a lot of my past lifetime. Not a lot. I mean, I've had, a, I've had quite a few. I don't mean to sound egotistical, but I've had a lot more than I can remember. So what I recall is that I was like in whatever you would call heaven. And they were like, you have to incarnate on earth. And I was like, no, I'm not mm -hmm. going to that mud bowl. And they were like, you have to go. And I was like, no, but that sounds like me. And they just kicked me out. They're like, go. And then I was in a human body. And an old friend of ours that we don't talk to anymore, um, she had said, she was like, yes, you guys had, like, we had wild power. But I don't think we remember who we were. Hmm. Like, we were put into human bodies. We had wild amounts of power, but we didn't know who we are. I don't feel like we were fallen. I think they sent us here to do something. Hmm. We didn't realize what I'm getting is we didn't realize what would happen when we got into a human body and we forgot what we were. Hmm. So do is do you remember why or does do you know why we keep reincarnating? Is there a particular reason? Well, there's one person that I'm gonna bring up, I forget her name. And it's a, a lot of people I agree with some of it. And I don't agree with some of what she says, but still she believes that you reincarnate into the same bloodline, usually for a mission and like 10 incarnations. It's like something you're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Like into like, say it's like a Pharaoh bloodline or like a biblical bloodline, which probably goes way before biblical times. Even though the, the Bible theoretically goes to the beginning, it might, I don't know. So, um, I feel like part of it is like journey of souls, which everyone asked me, like, what's the one book you recommend? And mm. I would say like destiny of souls, uh, the second one. Mm. And that's a whole nother topic, but still he talks about how in between incarnations, and he's very logical and he was a very world renowned psychiatrist, uh, or something like that. Very popular one when he got into this and he found that people, when he was going through his research, which is in the book is that, People would like go and they would choose, they would go to councils and they would die, like to see what lessons they had learned and whatever primary lesson or lessons they needed to learn that lifetime. Then they would like maybe go and build other planets or they would do this or they would do that. But eventually they would be like, I'm tired of doing this. I want to go back to Earth or I want to mm -hmm. go over here or I want to go over here. Because I hear all these, and I know you've heard this before, Jimmy. They're like people, like I don't want to reincarnate. I'm like, you're gonna reincarnate inevitably yeah. somewhere. So I'm like, I, I think that's just part of the plan. So, so I don't, yeah, it sounds like Earth. Um, if Earth is is pretty wild compared to the rest of the 
um universes or realms or um yeah. and and so people come here just when they get bored of doing everything else <laughs> well i think earth is like a big playground we have free will so mm. like if i were to go by like i'm, I'm mess up his name but chiron lee carol uh when i heard him the hundreds of hours of this guy on youtube when i was younger essentially earth is like another planet has like say 40 percent their higher self is in control in Earth, he said inevitably that would happen, like in the next like 10 years or 20 years, or maybe longer. Mm -hmm. But on these other planets, like we have almost total free will. Mm -hmm. So we can choose anything we want to do. Mm -hmm. So it's like we can, it's literally like a, like a carnival. And that's what makes it unique. Yeah. Because I did wonder that. I thought, well, <clears throat> if, if the the main goal mission or whatever is for humanity or earth to to to, to ascend so to speak and move up through the, the the dimensions or whatever then doesn't that take away some of the shall we say the the, the appeal of what earth is for to have a physical experience and have free will in that physical experience because if we if earth ascends through the dimensions then eventually um that physical experience is going to dissolve and it's just going to become energy and um, like there are in other dimensions supposedly in other dimensions where people are just where, where spirits are just energy and they don't have that physical interaction and i've heard that that's why a lot of souls incarnate on earth is to have that physical interaction but if if earth ascends then that physical interaction is going to one day um, kind of be no more. And so it's going to lose its pizzazz, so to speak. But yeah. I don't Maybe, maybe that's meant to happen. And there's, there's other places um, where you can have physical interactions and it's not just about Earth. But um, I guess we'll, we'll find out at some point. Yeah, the former teacher would say, um, I always call him a former teacher, Rossi. So mm. Rossi would say that out of all the planets, she's like, think of an angel. An angel ascends very slowly. But mm. if you incarnate onto Earth, you can ascend very fast. And she was like, there's 7 billion like souls waiting to come onto Earth. Or some crazy number mm. of souls trying to get onto Earth at any given time. Like mm. there's like a line. It's even if you talk about ETs, there's so many ETs watching this planet. I have this theory that whatever the galactic war is, however you look at that whole thing, is that we're kind of the deciders of what happens. I don't mm. know how, mm. but the Earth's population could at least play, I'm hearing, could play a pivotal role in it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like if we choose. I don't mm. know why we're so important. It's like people talk about different realities. Mm. I feel like we're a primary reality. Mm. So one of the, if if there was a, a sort of a controlling reality um, that dictates the rest of the, yeah. the vibration or the implications of what goes on in the rest of the known universe or just in the rest of the universe, then Earth is a pivotal factor the the vibration or frequency of earth is a is a hey bob um it's hey tony hey luke how you doing brother um hey brian uh but yeah i i think i've heard that it's kind of why there's a lot of attention around earth it's because they're watching, it, i mean they're watching us like hawk i've known this for a while they're like watching especially mm. certain spiritual workers in here they're like mm. I've heard this from other people that have watched me on Facebook and stuff. They'd randomly, like other psychics, they'd be like, you've got so many different beings watching you right now. Mm. Oh, I like, think I, yeah. They're like, how on earth? Well, not how on earth, but they're like, how? They're like, you're doing things. They don't even understand how you're doing. Mm. I'm like, I don't know. Mm. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't want to feel like I need to do. Exactly. So, yeah so um what 
what led you to obviously you had all of these gifts when you were younger what led you to kind of use them in this way that you're doing now uh one day i had had mentors and teachers for a long time and for like many many years and then i was attuned to one healing modality and like reiki level one and i was like one day i just woke up i was like i have to heal people mm. so i went to one of my friends who i knew was psychic and she at least was accepting of this and i was like let me see what i can do with this i don't know what's going to happen she's like okay she's like i'm seeing pyramids and merkabas one form of healing i do and she was like i was like okay cool so then i went to my ex-girlfriend and when i was like 39 too or something like that i can't remember the age ranges and i did healing on her and she was like she had a jaw issue and she messaged me the next day and she goes 50 percent of my pain's gone i don't know what you did <laughs> it's like two let's keep going so i just mm. kept doing this mm. and then i went on the facebook around christmas eve when i was 39 or something like that. i was 30 what age i was and i was like how do i get noticed how do i heal more people mm. so i started messaging all these maps of people like deborah and stuff like that at that time were really massive people mm. and i was like let like i offer my services and uh they just started talking about me then some girl came to me and said i would like you to go i was just sending energy through messenger to them like i would ask them if it was okay mm. they're like you know how you're doing this i was like i don't know what i just know how to do it mm. so i just kept doing it. it was funny to me so i kept doing it and uh they were like i want you to go on camera and i was like i don't know about that mm. i talked to one of my mentors at the time and he was like i don't remember what he said i think he was not for it but it's not something he would do. And I was like, let me see what happens. I recently saw that live a couple of like months ago, like part of it. And I was like, God, I look so green. Um, while I'm watching, I look so terrified to be on camera for yeah. one of those first few lives. But I just kept doing it. And I realized like the wilder I got, because I didn't have to worry about money or anything. Mm. I was, the wilder I got, the more people would watch. Yeah. So I was like, let me just, I was working a full-time job doing pest control. So I was just like, fuck it. Like, I'll just do this on my free time. Mm. Like every two weeks, once a month, whenever I feel like I want to do it. Mm. And it just blew up. And I was like, this is crazy. So yeah, I would just be making fun of Twin Flames and talking about all kinds of crazy stuff. But I don't think any, you saw me back then. I don't think anybody... It's seen a male on camera act mm. like yeah there was there was there was um i mean people love a bit of uh i don't i don't want to say controversy but but opinions that go against what is generally accepted um yeah. they seem to be quite uh drawn to them um and so from what i can remember seeing you around that time i kind of i think actually this dude is is, is crazy um, but it, it's strangely um, appealing. Um, it's almost like you, you just want to see what you do next. You know what I mean? It's one of those. Um, I feel like we're, 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 we're kind of drawn to that just because someone's different from sort of the norm. Um, no matter what they're like, I, I mean, within reason, of course. Yeah. But um, it... it, it I suppose you could say like they're edgy um they push the limit push the boundaries it's like an authenticity to it though mm. yeah you're just being it's yourself like, yeah it's so much of an authenticity because i was what irritated me so much with rossi was that you had all these people taking all these classes that were like two thousand dollars some of them were doing something with it but i was like you guys are taking all these classes mm. I, mean, I should not say this out loud but this could go one day be put somewhere else is that I was like, but none of you are doing shit with it. Mm. And here I am. And I'm not even taking these classes. Mm. And I was like, <laughs> I can do more than you can. Mm. And it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. If you're taking these classes, why aren't you doing something with them? Mm. Like, why aren't you out there like healing people? Why aren't you 
doing something, especially once I started healing people. And then even when I started getting on, um, like I, I started getting clients, like just everyday walking life. And then I was doing house clearings. Like anytime someone would offer me something, go to a psychic fair, I would just do it. I wouldn't even prepare. Mm. I would just go do it. Mm. And it would always work out like beautifully, mm. which would surprise me. But it was like going live. You just did it. I didn't half the time I go live most of the time. I don't even know what I'm gonna talk about if I'm gonna talk. I have no mm. idea. No, I don't. I'm the same. I don't I don't whenever I do a live, um it's generally just spur of the moment off the cuff, whatever comes up. Yeah. yeah. Do you get nervous? Yeah, 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 all the time. Mm. Um, I had so many panic attacks on Facebook while I was live. I just kept doing it. Mm. I just, I say that's the one thing people, they're like, well, I'm scared. And I'm like, you think I haven't been scared before? Mm. Yeah. I, I just keep doing it. It's like, I can't stop. Because the thing that I've found is with um, most of the people who watch, they wish that they want you to succeed. They don't want you to fail. I mean, obviously, you may get the odd one who's who's just tuning in, um, but they gen and, and if and if something goes wrong or whatever, then they're not going to all be on your back or they're not going to um, have a go at you because they're the community that I've seen uh, most uh, in, in in the main are understanding and kind and supportive. And so there's no there's no real reason to be, um, even though I still get nervous. Um, there's no real reason to be nervous because um, things will happen, and you know we know that if something happens um, that appears not to go well, um, it go it is sort of highlighting something um, for us to for for, you to, for us to look at and. There's always a reason, even if you even if you don't know the reason right right then, is is kind of um, the, the the sort of the explanation wait, wait, kind wait. of reveals itself in time. Yeah, I feel like um, there is obviously toxicity on spiritual scene. We both know that, but still, there is a lot of these people will. I noticed it last night when I was doing readings on TikTok and healing. Like, they're like, there'll be certain people just randomly. And they'd be like, Thomas, you look sad. And I'm like, listen, I'm the one on camera. I get that you care, but let me do my job. Like, this is like me going into Walmart and uh, asking you every five minutes if you're okay. Like, <laughs> doing your job. I can tell if the cashier's like got a problem going on or something, but I'm not going to ask her about it. <laughs> and they're like, oh, okay, we'll stop. But uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. What's the question? Well, no, it's just, just Frank says um, you should do your own TV show. I should, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, it was offered someone. Uh, I think it was Don Marisa that like a year and a half ago. She's like, in like three and a three and a half years, you're going to have your own TV show. Hmm. And I was like, okay. I was like I don't know. When it happens, <laughs> it happens. All right um here's a question uh well it's actually more of a well, a couple of questions um but they're sort of they're personal um to to the to the to the asker um so ada says although this would be a good informative um oh okay i see it because sometimes when we when we we do the things do hurt if if um, like maybe headaches or whatever um that could be any like, I mean it could be a physical um, thing we we can't necessarily attribute everything to downloads or spiritual or energetic means they can be physical sometimes and it's obviously important to explore the fact that it could be physical um and just sorry Jimmy I think it's different for everyone mm. so. I'm sure I get affected by downloads sometimes, but mm -hmm. I don't really notice as much. I think it really depends on who you are. And that sounds so, I, I'm prefaced everything I'm saying. I'm not trying to sound egotistical. 
I think it depends on who you are and how it affects you. Mm. You know, a lot of spiritual people get downloads and, and they can be affected so many different ways. So whether that's our DNA coming online, which I think is a big part of it, or whatever we accept to allow channeling a little bit, allow into our reality, mm. which I think is a really key point to things, which you're allowing into your reality. Mm. So you can build your own reality. I was watching, uh, I think it was Bob Proctor, but he was talking about Napoleon's Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Oh, yeah. His entire life. Mm. He reads it every day for like 50 years or something. Anyways, so obviously it works. I mean, it's still a best-selling book. Still, like, it's, he allowed that into his reality. He's like, I would never be the person I am today if I had, someone had not suggested that I read this book. Mm. So he allowed that into his reality. So I think that's kind of the key. It's like, if we were, what I'm hearing is, if we were Knights Templars running around, mm. everything would be about war and Jesus. Mm. We could probably still do the same things, but everything, that would be our reality. Mm. Running around conquering the world, and, and you know, a lot of people didn't like the Templars. I found that lifetime very entertaining, regardless of what happened. But for me, it would sound very entertaining. I remember. Mm -hmm. So very entertaining. Lots of war. And uh, yeah. So and I'm sure I challenge the status quo on some level. I seem to do that about every lifetime. Uh, anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Um, I've got one more from... Tara. The que the, what I'm hearing from my guides, Tara, is does it matter hmm. who, if you did it, your subconscious mind, angels? I think that's, we, we, I think we try to quantify the answer into mm. some especially i'm getting beyond ourselves and i think that this is my opinion i think that sometimes it doesn't matter as long as it happens mm. and do you think um do you think that can be applied to channeling as well it's it's, it's almost as if someone uh we say per se we want to say channel a certain being or or a certain entity or whatever and we get an answer come through and we we express it obviously and then but there's some sort of sometimes there's a fascination of knowing who it was what was that just me was that my own mind was that this angel was it that um ascended master was it you know was it who was it and does it does it matter whether it was it came from your own consciousness or whether it came or you channeled it from another being because surely everything's in, interconnected anyway and who's to say that ascended masters angels aren't us or our spirit guides aren't us just in a different form as it is so i think we can get too hung up on where information comes from as long as it comes through and it feels right then that's kind of all that matters but i don't know what your take on that is yeah um i'm just being reminded of something so i would have people say this to me and a guy used to be like used to hang out with a lot from Ecuador or from Argentina, he would be like, when I was doing a session with you, he's like, your face kept changing into like other beings. Mm. And I was like, I think I'm changing into other versions of myself mm. while I'm doing this. He's like, you, you turn blue. That's like probably the first times I heard the Syrian thing. Mm. So I was like, oh, but I didn't really know what that meant. He's, I was like, I don't know that. But yeah, that's the thing is I think sometimes we're just tapping into other versions of ourselves or maybe other beings. Can't tell you how many times I've heard someone say it was an archangel or something, but that may only be their frame of reference. Mm. They're like, oh, you're Archangel Jeremiah. Oh, you're Archangel Michael. And I'm like, you've heard this, Jimmy. Everyone thinks there's some fucking archangel. Not everyone, but a lot of people do. And I'm like, give me a break. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm like, give me a break. Like, you can't all be Archangel Mike. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, 
I, I just, I think humans want to place a very strong importance on certain things. So outside of themselves is what I keep hearing over and over again. I did a post on this what, uh, a year or two ago um, about how ev about how, how everyone um, was Cleopatra. You know, it, mm -hmm. it must have been like, it, or, you see loads of posts that oh yeah, I was Cleopatra in a preach. Oh, okay, good. Um, they but, still are. I'm still hearing about it. But like, I mean, that's not to say that Cleopatra. Okay, there's like eighty-five thousand of you that were Cleopatra, or eighty-five yeah. million, or something. I'm like, give me a break. You guys don't even know who Cleopatra was. You'd never be saying that name. <laughs> and that's not to say they weren't. I mean, if infinite timelines exist, and you know, and if everything's possible, then they might very well have been. But I, I, I don't know. I, I found it quite um, interesting, shall we say? Yeah. So I'm like, how many people are worth this person? And I've heard the Michael thing so many times, you know, like other people saying they were Michael. I'm like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. um, and the person, like one of my friends talks about one of his friends that ended up in prison or something. He thought he was Michael or whatever happened to the guy who died. I can't remember. But still, like, he was like, I, I was so drawn in because he could do all these amazing things. Mm -hmm. like, well, look at him now. Mm hmm he's passed away or he's in prison or whatever i think he's in prison so i'm just like look at him now and it's real it's a real high involvement for archangel mike mm. <laughs> <laughs> <He's in prison. laughs> <Why not? laughs> get out easy um there's a question from brian which brings uh, which kind of um ties in with another question that i have uh the question well the question that i'm going to ask is um how is it seeing a whole new life a whole new view of spirituality sort of later in life as opposed to when you were younger um and kind of if you can intertwine that with this question from brian you he might you he will uh he might sort of gain some insight into in from your experience on how you can kind of inter intertwine or intermingle the two i don't really I'm different, Brian. So <laughs> I've had my family say stuff to me, especially my mother. Um, I don't care. And when I when I was at pest control, people were watching me that I worked with on Facebook. And they would get like arguments about me while I was there. Hmm. Like, I remember talking to one guy who was really Christian. He was my boss at the time. But my old boss was like, you've never seen him on camera. There's something to what he's doing. Like I can feel it when he's doing healing, like there's something to what he's doing. And it's like, it's quite remarkable. So that's the point is I just didn't really care what anyone thought about me. Mm. I think people care so much about, it's like zebras, Jimmy. Mm. It's like they all have stripes, okay? They don't stand out, but together they fit in a perfect cohesive unit to protect themselves from a lion. This mm. is what people like to do. They like to fit in a cohesive unit and not stand out because mm. they won't be attacked. Mm. They feel safety in this. It's like herd mentality. And I'm not saying that towards you, Brian. I just think people in general feel this way. Mm. So I like to stand out. Mm. So I don't really care. Like I'll care sometimes what people think, but for the most part, I'm like, whatever. Like just mm. leave me alone or get away from me. And, but I'm cool with that. I think I've always been cool with that. Because I think as a kid, I was effed with so much until I was 14 that I just, my name's Tom Sawyer. So like I was effed with so much. So I always stood out regardless of what the fuck I did. Even if I was cussing too much. So even when I got popular and started getting in fist fights and everything else, and I prayed about that. I said, God, I, I want to be popular. I didn't know this would work. I said, I want to <laughs> be popular. I want to be respected not fucked with and be, be respected and have a girlfriend and it happened within like two weeks or a month like everything started shifting so fast i didn't know this would work hmm. but i was so like pissed off and it just started getting in fist fights with people and it was weird um but i've done this quite a few times i'll pray i'll pray or just demand that something happens like my ex um i just i said God, I want a girl that looks like this. And I didn't even say, I said, I was like, this is what I want. 
I go, I want a girl that looks like this. I want her spiritual and not to be crazy and kaboom. Within a week, she was there. Mm. Or two weeks, she was there. I was like, what on earth? How does this happen so fast? But I've done this so many times with so many things. Yeah, just ask. That's all we have to do, really. So balancing your career with your spiritual development. So many people, they message me. They're so afraid of what other people think. And I think sometimes that's okay because I've seen some bad scenarios with other people, not me. But where they can't do that or they're being judged. But I'm like, <laughs> I've been judged my whole life for this. Mm. I've judged my whole life just in general. So what's another day at the office for me? Mm. I mean, even with the drama that happened on TikTok seven months ago, it's like, I'm not really surprised, honestly. Mm. Thinking back about it, I'm like, yeah, I mean, you saw me during that time. But mm. but like, I'm not really surprised that this all this happened. And as one of my friends told me, like, you're going to get bigger, Thomas, eventually, like super, a lot bigger. And you're going to have to deal with this again. Maybe not this way, but another way. Mm. So you have to see how you're going to roll with this. Mm. Can you handle it? And I was like, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> so, and you'll have your supporters come out for you. And then you'll have people who won't be supporters. And mm. people, unfortunately, hate conflict. They love conflict, but they don't like to do it in person. So they will talk about you behind your back sometimes. <clears throat> and be judgmental. At the same time, you can't let that ruin you. I think it's the best way to answer the question. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Exactly. I hope that helped, Brian. And I think that we get to a point, at, like Thomas says, where we just think it's, it's not worth caring about. I mean, it, it's sort of, we do care, but we don't necessarily care because it's not worth, our, it's not our peace and us living how we choose to live and being ourselves, etc. Is is worth the, the any perspective judgment or any future sort of judgment or or criticism from people because we get to a point where we think we i've just got to do this i don't care what people say anymore because it's not if i was to live how everyone expects of me then it wouldn't be my life it would be their lives so mm. um we we i think we all kind of forget to that point it's it's, it's one time or another where we just think oh fuck it um, basically. I want to be 80 or 90 years old in a nursing home, whatever age, if that happens. Mm. And look back, because I watch those videos to give me motivation. And mm. everything they say they wish they had done. Mm. I don't want to be one of those people. Mm. Like, even if it's like insanity and insane sounding, whatever it is I do. Like, I, I want to, I want it, I want to say I did everything that I, I wanted to do. Mm. Like that, and, that's what I want to say. And that's not to say that we should just disregard everyone else's feelings or where, because no. there's something within us that, that says, oh, well, yeah, we can do what we want, but if it causes pain or whatever to someone else, then we're not going to do it because it, it kind of, it, um, it, it's just within us to, to care about how others, how others feel. And, 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 you know, I mean, it's not in everyone, obviously psychopaths, psychopaths are a different, um, mm. story, but, um, for the most people do care about not hurting other people and um so it's not to say we should just do whatever we want regardless um but at the same time i guess it's all just um life uh, and how things are and um we do what we feel is best at the time whatever our lens of morality is for ourselves because every perspective is going to be different mm. There was a guy that commented on one of my TikTok videos, and uh, of course, some things will trigger me. But when I looked at, I followed him back. <clears throat> he was very Christian, and I deleted the comment. But I wanted to see his videos, and I was like, "Oh, you're a militant Christian. I get it." So, like, he was like, "People shouldn't be tapping into spirituality without knowing what they're doing." And I was like, "Well, he does have a kind of a point on that on some level, but you don't get started in anything. You don't tap into Christianity without you do that without knowing what you're doing too." So yeah. what is really the difference? Of course, you can't mm -hmm. write all that. And it's going to be an argument back and forth. But still, because he's going to think he's right and I'm wrong. And I'm going to think I'm right and he's wrong. So mm -hmm. there's no real way to win that debate. 
but no. still it's I always like I just find it very interesting how judgmental people are hmm. I've got a question do you think spirituality has become a religion yeah I feel the new age movements become a religion I, mm. I, I I'm gonna say it like this I feel it's become a cult I feel Christianity has become a cult mm. I feel everything has become a cult now is that a bad thing I don't think so when I feel like it's a bad thing is when I see certain other creators on different apps and it's very few actually and they wouldn't be people like other people that watch me on TikTok would even think I would know. But I see them making cults of people. And some of my clients will come back to me and talk to me sometimes. And I, I won't really engage with the conversation, but I'll listen to what they're saying. They'll be like this guy. And I go, I know. Like, I already know. I've already had other people say stuff. But I won't even, like, usually say anything unless it's, like, off the record. And I know they're not going to talk. Because I know how people are. Like, they'll, they'll start calling causing more drama. Some, some people. So... Yes, I feel like it's become a cult. Um, it's like Christianity. I don't think Jesus came to actually, it's going to be so controversial. I don't feel like Jesus came to do what people think he came to do. If I were to go by Edgar Casey's definition, and Edgar Casey and Madame Lebowski are two of the main pioneers of the New Age movement. And Edgar Casey was a Sunday school teacher as well, yeah. which is really wild. And is that if we didn't have them and the spiritualist movement, the 1800s, I don't even think we'd have the new age movement. Mm. Yeah. So I, I don't think they realize what would happen. Is a question from Len? Yes. The answer is yes. Do you ever get <laughs> to the point of being overwhelmed to just tune out your guides? And yes, yes, yes. This is why it disappears sometimes. You have a day off. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm taking a whole day off. I don't care. I'll watch TV all day. Uh, yes, yes. It does get overwhelming sometimes. I don't think our guides realize that we're human. So I just, it gets, it gets, mm. I don't think they realize what it is to be human anymore. So it's almost like so much sometimes. There's lives I've done on different apps where I like, I will literally, me and Jimmy we did this, okay, mm. a couple times. So we would mm. go live for four and a half hours straight. The amount of energy that takes like and i had to do it back then because i needed the money mm. and i had to go there as long as i could push myself and yeah so but sometimes i would leave that being totally depleted even with TikTok, and sometimes i leave that being totally fine mm. but then i made us check out for like two days as long as like but the thing with me is i'm not very consistent when it comes to like going live like I do it at all kinds of weird times and I post at weird times. It's kind of how I am. So, but I think you have to develop some kind of consistency. Mm. <laughs> Lauren says four hours, completely insane. <laughs> four and a half hours. I was underneath a gas station in the middle of the rain from camping with Jimmy underneath. It was pouring rain and we went live and I somehow found this gas station in the middle of nowhere and they let me sit there for four and a half hours it was like barely anybody coming in <laughs> with Jimmy like for four and a half hours and then there was another time I actually had the uh the vid and it just started and I was like I got this live and I gotta afford my testosterone shots for my I get them from a doctor and I'm like I got I gotta do this live so i was like shit okay here we go and afterwards i was like oh jesus i need to go to sleep like this has made me worse but i, I had to do it i didn't have a choice yeah like i was like i gotta do it whatever i mean i do that a lot with lives i'm just yeah. like i don't really want to go live but then once i get going mm. it used to be like a shift at some point mm. maybe within a minute or two i'm like eh, okay let's go <laughs> <laughs> I used to do I'd done three four hour lives with Crystal um and yourself um and others as well um but yeah it does kind of take it out of you yeah like you're pushing yourself to extreme limit mm. yeah that's true Lauren Jolene did used to do long lives as well um question from Sharonda hey Sharonda I don't well, does the tapping of the face help tune the guides out? It's so interesting to me because so many people want to hear their guides and then some people want to tune them out. Um, 
because I get both questions. Like the, the more questions I get is how do I talk to my guides? I'm like, they're already talking to you. He's not listening. So um, but sometimes they are. But still, I don't know about the tapping stuff. I know you're what you're talking about. I don't know. I know there's people that do that on Facebook and TikTok, but I don't know what that is. Was it you talking about EFT? Uh, Sean? Yeah. yeah. The sort of the and then underneath the eyes and then the and then all of that kind of stuff. Are you talking? Is that what you're talking about? <coughs> Excuse me. That will like tapping emotional me. freedom technique or something. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't heard. I mean, I know a few people who do it and who teach it, actually. I mean, if it works for you and subconsciously you pick up that it will do that or you just believe it will, then it will. Yeah. I've, 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 I've known people who have had good results from doing that. Yeah. And each day, you know, I don't necessarily um, resonate with it. But then again, I resonate with, with other techniques or methods, as I'm sure you do, that other, yeah. other people don't. It's, it's kind of like whatever works. I like to find sometimes people that are totally off the beaten path. So like a year and a half ago, I got sent to an acupuncturist. Mm. I know it just sounds like an acupuncturist, but this lady, dear God, in Savannah, she's in a perfect spot. Number one, she's an exorcist. Number mm. two, everything to her is 15th century and before. Number three, she doesn't even know what the Bible is. She doesn't know what Facebook is, TikTok, anything. Mm. She is like slammed with people. They've been seeing her for like 20 years. I couldn't even tell how old this lady is. Like, I thought she was like 40, maybe 55. I have no idea. So, but she was doing divergent channels. She would explain to me one time that someone would cut. She said a girl came to her one time and said, an 18 year old girl, because she had a whole massive art school out there, college, and said, uh, I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here. And she goes, mm -hmm. Okay, this is what I have to do three times a week for three months. This is how much it's going to cost. And she's like, that girl is going to become an actress in Hollywood. By the time she was done with this, she went on to New York and is the, one of the leading interior decorators in the world. But she's mm. channeling all of this art from another dimension. She and like she randomly comes back and sees me like every couple of years, but it totally changed her life. Mm. And that was the thing. Is but the thing about I'm not going to talk smack. Is that I feel like people eventually she's got a kind of a god complex i feel like people eventually fall before her mm. like they're so broken at some point by what she's doing which i think is part of the process mm. her and other teachers i've seen they, they push you to limits that break you i would mm. never break mm. like there would be times where i would almost break and i would do something to make sure that i didn't yeah yeah and i just kept doing this and i think she's like how is this guy so doing this i mean she knew like i was psychic and i was did all these things but she was like how is he doing this and she eventually just kicked me out after three months <laughs> so yeah but she was amazing and one day i'll probably thank her or i'll put her mm. in my book mm. you started writing a book yeah 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 maybe um, that shit crazy is that what it's called? spiritual enlightenment <laughs> excellent well, everything's of gonna be in there Speaking of, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I saw something about um, that shit uh, the other day about how I think it's 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 used in in, in fer for fertilizer and it's the most potent fertilizer and best fertilizer in the world or something like that. Um, and how a lot of it comes from the the, the minerals that that are needed for the bats or something like that to eat. It come from Morocco and Morocco is. Um, one of the biggest exporters of or suppliers of this mineral. Um, anyway, I don't know what it's got to do with with with, uh, with anything. <laughs> but it just reminded me when you said batshit. I don't know why. But anyway, um, so if you want some good uh, guano, that's it. Well done, Brian. Um, guano. So if, uh, little tip for people if if they want to grow some some plentiful and uh, bountiful vegetables, then get some guano. Um, Aren't those those coffee beans that come out of bats butts too? Well, that might be off the subject. It's like some extreme, like expensive coffee. I think it comes mm. out of bats. Um, we're not sponsored by guano or anything like that, by the way. <laughs> we're not sponsored by bat shit. 
<laughs> Although that would be quite unique. That's our segue. <laughs> um, question from Ivy. Everyone asks me this question. I I can't I can't reveal client confidentiality. What about um, pest control? When you when you did pest control, you, you I remember you, you've you've told us a couple of stories when we've been doing lives about spiders running towards you and, and stuff like that. What's the scariest one that you've done when you've been doing your pe the, the pest control? Like okay. the one where you thought, oh Let's shit, you, I'm, I'm in trouble here. Was okay. there any one where, where you thought, oh shit, I'm in trouble? Um, um, with pest control, hmm, that's going to be too much to say, uh, where I had to kill a rat. I didn't have a choice, like physically kill it. But hmm. there were times... Hmm, I'm thinking of one spiritual thing, but uh, as far as not on the spiritual path, there were, I was in a crawl space. My friend recently did a job and he quit, but he was in a crawl. He's like, I don't know how you went through these crawl spaces for years, like checking them for termites or whatever I was doing. And when I was in one that the house had burned down and they encapsulated a very, very expensive house. They rebuilt it after they it burned down. And they encapsulated it. I had to go check it out to give clearance if there were any termites. It's encapsulated. It's not like I'm even going to see anything really. But as I was going out or coming in, this brown recluse ran up to me, was running. So I'm only like this high off the ground. And it's running at me. And all I have is a flashlight. And brown recluses run and they jump on you and bite you if they're going to bite you. They're not, mm -hmm. they're pretty aggressive. And so the thing's running at me at the last second, I'm looking at it. I only have like three seconds, five seconds to decide what I'm going to do. I'm like, flashlight smashed brown recluse before it jumps. And so mm -hmm. I just smashed the thing. But if that thing had jumped up and bit me, you get a brown recluse bite, you better go to the hospital quick. Mm -hmm. But the scariest thing, there was this client, I did notice this, not with a lot, but with some, that would have things going on in their house. And this is going to freak people out, because they're going to think it's all of them, but it's not. <laughs> the, the thing that's going to freak them out is that so i see this lady and she's got like demons all around her and i'm like i don't even know what i'm looking at like i didn't even it's like a saturday i'm like mm -hmm. i'm not supposed to like i only work every couple saturdays so like i'm like i don't even know what the hell this is and like she scared me like i didn't want to get near her and then she moved into like she was she had a bunch of kids she's a very attractive woman and she had a bunch of kids. She married an older guy. She moved into someone else's house. And, and when she finally broke the first contract before she, when she moved, I was like, thank God she's gone. She's always got rats in her house and her trailer. Cause I had a couple trailers back then. She's always got rats in her trailer. She's always got bugs in her trailer. This is like pestilence. Mm. Like I would see a lot of pest control issues, but this was something on a whole nother level. I was like, there's no way. And maybe it's just because it's a trailer in my head. Maybe it's just because it's a trailer. It was after me seeing demons around her too. Like I was going through the whole process. But then she gets in, moves into another house. And it's a nice house. And the guy, like, I go in. She, I was like, oh, no, she re-signed up. Like, this is going to be bad. So I get in there. And they have all these bug issues starting to happen. Rat issues, everything. And I'm like, what on earth is going on here? And I'm talking to the guy and he goes, everything was fine until like a month ago. And I wanted to, to like, look at him and go, it's because she moved in here. <laughs> Cause there were rats everywhere. There were ants. It was like the craziest problems. Normally if people had ants, I could fix it really quick. It was mm. just occasionally it was like, you, you really had to look outside the box to figure out what the problem was. But I feel like sometimes like, those people are attracting those to their house. Now, I know everyone's going to think they're attracting something to their house. It's not really the case because one person sees a roach, they freak out. I'm talking about infestations mm. of stuff. Yeah. When it's just you know, open. Ants, I'm just a rat. So I'm like, what? even when she sold the house, I was dealing with rat issues for like with this house for like a year. I was like, please cancel. I can't fix this. <laughs> I think eventually, I don't know if I ever fixed it when I left. Like I kept treating it like it would get rid of it. It would still come back. She sold the house to this guy. He's cutting down trees. I think I, it took me like a year and a half to fix it, which is really strange. It only would take me like a month to fix something like that. I had to mm. find the calls. Mm. And it was, was it the, was it the demons that she attracted? I don't know because she had sold the house to this mm. nice Mexican couple. And 
the guy went out of his way to cut down tree limbs, do everything he could. Mm. Because obviously he didn't want the rats in the house and the mice. But yeah, it was it came down to them being a hole, but I, maybe they just chewed that because rats will do that sometime. Mm. But one thing I did realize, uh, Rossi told me once, she goes, what I find hilarious is that you're killing parasites in the physical realm, but you also kill parasites in the spiritual realm. Mm. And I realized that there were people that were calling me back for service because I only got paid for the one service. They called me back and get paid for it. They were calling me back because there was something wrong with their house. And like just me being in the house could clear it. Mm. So, and I didn't realize this. And what was she said it? I was like, oh shit. And I was like, God or guides, whatever at that time. I was like, stop it. My job could never figure out how my call rate went from like like 15 to like two <laughs> like years. Yeah. And I said, stop it. Like I'm not here to clear their house. Mm. And yeah, so that's extra. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's his extra time for me. I'm mm. not gonna careful. Uh, hold on. I'll get to yours in a minute, Mary. Um, but just because we were on that subject, Raven said, Never come across a demon I couldn't deal with. Come across people that will not let go of things. Hmm. Uh, there's only a couple cases. I can't ask client confidentiality, but. I've come across a couple cases and it's been like one, two or three where they could not let go. I'm getting about two and yeah, I would just give them their money back. Mm. So what I found interesting, there was one girl I can talk about. She came to me on Facebook time two years ago and I was only on Facebook and she said, uh, I've gone, I spent $40,000 on people to help me with this problem. She saw me and then the next day she messaged me. She's like, I can't believe it. It's gone. I go, yeah. And you paid me 90 bucks. Mm. <laughs> I was like, whatever. I mean, I was charging far less back then, mm. but she essentially like came back to me later with the same thing, like with something else that tried to attack her. And I, I think she was allowing stuff to come at her somehow. And she didn't want to pay me. So I was like, whatever. Cause I'd like raise my prices by then. Mm. But, uh, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, there's not much I've come across that I can't deal with. I don't think there's really, I've dealt with some crazy things, mm. but I'm hearing I've pushed myself to limits for this. Mm. Like limits. Most people would run away in fear by, I know because other spiritual workers will send people to me. Mm. Like Thomas, they got this going on. You are you cool with it? I'm like, yes. have them talk to me. Let's see. Mm. They're willing to pay me like 400 bucks. Yeah, okay, I'll do it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, Tamara, Tamara, sorry, says what the demon's name, but uh, oh no, I don't even go down that pathway. Yeah, I don't even tell people what I remove half the time. They're like, tell me what you remove. No. Because then you're going to get fixated and probably mm. relate with something else. Mm. No offense tomorrow. Um, but yeah, it's just, it, I'm like, no. Even if I don't know what it is, I don't care because I know what the frequency, not the frequency, I know what the energy of it is. Mm. I just know if it's supposed to be there or it's not. I might see it. A lot of times I see something of it and I just remove it. I'm like, moving on. Mm. I'm like, right. live your life in peace. I had a girl come to me once. I can say this at least is that she was all into spiritual TikTok, which is a huge issue, I will say, with spiritual TikTok. But is that, I'll tell you why it's a huge issue in a second. But she came to me and I go, you need to get the F off TikTok in the spiritual scene. Mm. You're literally driving yourself insane. Go back to being a normal person. Go find something else. Like that's <laughs> not normally ever my advice to anybody. But I was mm. like, really my best advice to you is to get away from all these idiots. This was mm -hmm. like, I was like, even me, like get away from me, get out of spirituality, like take a break for like a year. Mm -hmm. But I will say this, and I heard someone talk about this. It was a psychic who's on the radio that one of my friends sent me. She's on TikTok too. And someone mentioned something about healing. 
And I think she's right. She goes, if you keep having all these different people work on you, why yeah. do you think you're having issues? Yeah. You're letting all these people pump energy into you that's from totally different sources. I was always taught that from one of my former mentors who knows what he's doing. He's one of the best I've seen. Um, he would say, when you do a healing, you wait two weeks for it to incorporate within your body. Mm. You do not tell anyone about it for 48 hours. Anything mm. you heard. But you got to understand, Jimmy, we were taught from a lineage of like 36,000 years of Mayan shamanism. Mm. They perfected this stuff. I'm not in that lineage. Mm. But they have perfected this. It wasn't mm. like some Reiki healer that had taken an attunement, gotten on TikTok, got popular in the last eight months. Mm. And then all of a sudden, like, was like, I'm a master. I, I don't think I'm a master at all. So, like, yeah. I, mm. I was taught a very old way of thinking. The sort of um th that makes sense because you think about it uh because i've always thought that you don't well, i mean you people can do what they want but obviously but um sure. it makes sense because if you, you could have all of these different um th these liquids or these foods that are really good for you but if you have them one after the other then they're going to mix and they may interact with each other and they may yeah. cause you to feel ill What's your um, yeah i drank 10 of these back to back yeah or four, I'd probably be going crazy. Well, if you drink that and then drink something else and then have something to eat, that's all going to mix. And, and, yeah. and even though, I mean, I'm not necessarily saying the monster's good for you because I don't think it it's is. But, probably not. But, <laughs> but you know, if, if you drink, say, I don't know, pineapple juice, then you have a, um, a stick of celery and then you have some nuts and then you have this and then you have all of these things that are, that are supposed to be good for you yeah. they might mix in a way that make you feel like shit and the, the, the fact that it's not that you haven't eaten into stuff that's good for you it's just you've overwhelmed your body with the things and it's made you feel and it's kind of made you feel um, not so good shall we say yeah, um, I think people like overdo it sometimes with TikTok and other apps because there's more than this TikTok, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I think they get healings like every day. Now, am I going to turn away someone though? But at the same time, they got to be caught like they can't go to 50 different people for healings. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to say is, what is their certifications? What is their criteria? I know, Jimmy, we come from an age where people had like certificates everywhere. <laughs> you had to be considered like mm. people wanted to know your certificates now mm. no one cares no i collected so many certificates mm. but the thing was is that there is something to being trained in stuff so now it's kind of like the wild wild west again i'm hearing mm. when it comes to the spirituality it's like literally anyone can form a cult online i know what she's asking what's my mentor's name is one of them I, i've had a bunch of them there was like tim neil um uh, noel uh she's got one probably won't be to mention her name anyways but so there were quite a few mentors i had there were more than that there was like ross you remember ross I, i'm sure i don't want to say his full name and uh for a short time and there was uh there's a lot of people actually there's probably like 10 or 15. i put myself through the gambit even with teachers there was like two in atlanta i found the best teachers i could get my hands on i would walk out of people's classes mm. and i was looking for a teacher i'd be like i would say something crazy or ask them a crazy question mm. and then they would be like look at me like i was insane i'd be like yep you can't help me so i walked out <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I was very like, I remember my friend Carlos would be in those classes before we were friends. And he would be like, I remember these classes, you would walk in there, you'd stand up in the middle and be like, I'm cursed to fight demons, which I don't believe that anymore. But at the time mm -hmm. I did. And I go, can you help me? They look at me like I was crazy. I'd be mm -hmm. like, yep, you can't help me. Peace out. And I would just walk out the door. <laughs> I was like, I knew they couldn't help me. So I was yeah, like, yeah. I need someone who understands what I'm talking about and what I'm seeing. And eventually I found Rossi and it made perfect sense. That woman could have been a global superstar. I think mm. she was great to be. Mm. 
Hi. Um, hey, Bob. Uh, we're not doing readings about today, by the way, Bob. It's just a uh, question and answers with uh, Thomas. Um, hey, Akisha. Got one more question. Yeah. Uh, well, well, we've got another question, shall we say? No, just one more. Yeah. Uh, it's what Mary says. Oh. Um without socializing with others i think that is the problem <laughs> how are you going to do mediumship if you can't get feedback from people that's that's the thing so many people are afraid to i know who mary is um so many people are afraid that a lot of people are actually afraid to like work with other people but how are you going to ever get better if you don't or mm. work on other people like, how are you ever going to get better if you don't? Like, that is the number one question I have. And it might be because, I mean, because I've went through this, um, you're afraid to be wrong. And because, but then at the same time, you know, you have, we, they're, 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 again, they're, I think there comes a time where you think, well, I'm just going to say what comes through and then, and then, well, so be it whatever happens happens um, if someone if it doesn't resonate with someone then you know it is that's yeah. how it is um but i think the the more you the more confidence you have in yourself the more you trust what comes through the more that will come through um, and yeah. this is this is like if you doubt what's coming through then you it's almost like if you doubt it then the channel constricts um because you're you're not giving your trust over to to um to the source shall we and say. we've talked to plenty of psychics jimmy in our time yeah. how much how many times have we heard them complain about things so like or doubt themselves or whatever like we've we've heard this so many times mm. it's come out of us sometimes so mm. not like totally doubt but doubt on some level mm. But we see that that's why when I started healing, I needed people's reactions. I needed to see what would happen. Mm. And I got these miraculous things happening. And I was like, okay, well, now I'm starting to understand what I'm doing. So then I just was like, okay, how do I do this? 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 So unless you, I think people are so afraid of socializing with each other, especially now after a uh, you know, pandemic, that it's it's really crazy to me i think there's going to be a resurgence and just normal everyday walking life of spiritual teachers that's mm -hmm. the pendulum always swings whether mm -hmm. it's light and dark right or left whatever i'm not political people don't get mad at me so the thing is is that last night some people asked me some crazy questions in my life but the point is is that it always swings so like it's going to go internet and then there's going to be a huge resurgence in everyday normal life of like mm -hmm. spirituality. Like it's going to go kaboom. I already, mm -hmm. I, I see it before it happens. And that therein lies the question, Mary, if people are afraid, how are they going to talk in front of other people? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm already starting. I already have an event next month um, or this month, sorry, on the 14th. And then I'm teaching a, a healing modality the next month. And I have plans. My guides are like, don't say what your plans are. But I have plans. Mm. So, and I'm going to get what I want. So, yeah. Because, um, what was I going to say? Anyway, Mary said that. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh, it depends on who you are, like your circle of friends, whether they're, I suppose it's, it's hard to socialize and talk about the mediumship, etc. If you're in a group of friends who think what you're doing is, don't give any, any value in what you're doing and think that you're crazy or whatever. But then there's always the online community that, that you can build up friendships with. And yeah. so I suppose socializing doesn't necessarily always have to be in person, no. but I know what you mean. When, whenever I do a, a spiritual fair, the the readers, because I generally do my sound healing stuff at, at, at fairs, um, 
but the readers who do go there they're always fully booked and so i think there is a, a there is sort of a resurgence and there's there's an appeal of having a face-to-face -face reading and yeah. which comes with its own set of uh i don't want to say problems there's mm -hmm. good and bad to this but it's a whole different thing than being online because i've done it in person plenty of times mm -hmm. but like i did a psychic fair a long time ago and I didn't think anything would happen. I didn't think anyone would see me, but I did one healing and then I was book solid. Like mm. people were watching me, they're like, how is this guy getting all these people? But what I realized was the second I did energy work on that one person, it sent out a signal through the whole room, like the energy just started going around the room. Mm. And every time someone walked in, they were like, Thomas, 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 Thomas. And I was like, oh my God, after like five hours, four and a half hours, I was like, I told the people there, I was so book solid. I was like, mm. you have to give me like 20 minutes. Like I got to go to the bathroom. I have to eat. I have to like smoke. <laughs> yeah. I, I need to, I need a break. Like it's too much. And, um, which taught me a valuable lesson about when this happens next time. <laughs> but, um, mm. anyways, I need to be prepared. So, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I feel like that's going to be the next big thing. Mm. Chiron. I know I say his name all the time, but I say it wrong all the time. But he would say there's eventually going to be a, like there's going to be like a technological version of people and then people that go back to like the old ways. Mm -hmm. And I still feel like he's right on some level. There might be a mix of that. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like there'll be a divide in humanity. Mm -hmm. I. Oh, you're welcome, Tara. Tara. Um... Yeah, it's, 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 I think it's a common, well, not necessarily common, but it's something that um, a lot of people are experiencing because they don't necessarily, uh, there, there are people who aren't aware and, and don't give much credence to what the things that are going on. Um, and that's fair. I mean, we, we've all, well, I know I certainly have, we're, we're deep in the, in the, shall we say, the, the 3D way of life and i think it's nice to have a balance between the two um, and yeah. so that you can keep sort of a, a foot in each so to speak so you're not too up there and you're not too down here or you know whichever way up there and down here is um, let, me, let me speak on that jimmy so like mm -hmm. a lot of my friends in everyday walking life like yeah i've got people that are psychic or spiritual friends a lot of them actually but i have a lot of friends that are just like some of them that are psychic we don't even talk about anything psychic like we just go out and like eat dinner and talk about MMA or something. Mm. Like I just don't even bring it up, or I might bring it up, but they, they'll just be like, "What dinner?" <laughs> yeah, like we'll be eating like Rio Steakhouse. It goes Brazilian Steakhouse all the time. Ah, like, they have one of them in Ipswich. Do what? They have one of them where I am in Ipswich. Oh, it's really? amazing because it's all you can eat. Yeah, um, keep bringing it home. So it's like it's they, they don't rip you off either some of those charge a lot of money these guys charge like 23 bucks or 27 or something mm -hmm. but it's really like i just we just sit there and we eat and we talk about different things mm -hmm. but then i have friends that are like when i was 13 or 18 that i'm still friends with and even one of the guy I eat dinner with all the time he's well since i've been 17. so like they knew me long before i was ever psychic Mm. like we can sit there and talk about anything yeah yeah like they don't want to hear any of that stuff <laughs> they don't want to hear about like other stuff so yeah it's actually quite refreshing a lot mm. of times that's nice i, I like the, the the difference in 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 the two subjects shall we say yeah but this is something me and jimmy did talk about and ask jimmy this question Lately, I feel like we've become, you brought this up first, but I felt this way too. We feel like we've become more psychiatrists than psychics. <laughs> what do you feel about that? Yeah, uh, just some of the, and that's fair. In some ways, I can understand it because people are going through a tough time and they don't necessarily know where to turn and professional help does cost a lot. And so in some ways I can totally, I totally get it because if someone's having a, a really hard time, then, and they, they don't know what to do. They come to someone who they, who they trust and, and who they can rely on. 
um, and who's and who's, I guess, opinion, not necessarily opinion, but their the services that that they they can trust, um, and but yeah it, it, it certainly it certainly kind of was a it, it tests and puts i found that it, I, I was being put under more pressure than i'm used to which is not necessarily a bad thing um because it takes you out of your comfort zone and yeah. when you're channeling as you know um it doesn't we don't just channel information that we already know we can channel information that maybe we hadn't even considered and we get things from places and so it's a way to sort of push ourselves so to speak and we can we can get information we can bring forth information that may we we didn't realize that we knew um or that we would sort of come from say our, our conscious um human mind we can channel that information from different perspectives and but yeah i like in some ways it's it is scary um giving sort of that kind of advice because obviously we're not trained professional um counselors or anything like that yeah. but if people rely uh, want that then i find it hard to to say no but um anyway what do you think <laughs> yeah, they have to be willing to do the work mm. i think it applies to everyone including me including you um i can't tell you the amount of times i've told someone to study something um it's up to them whether they do it or not so i try to fix the problem with like one or two things. I can do it energetically, but you can't totally do everything energetically. I'm hearing you can't. Still like they'll come to me and they'll be like, I need this, I need I need to fix my life, I need this. And I'm like, well, you gotta make a decision what you wanna do. Mm -hmm. Like you gotta make a choice here. And have you, I mean, my guides do this to me, like you had enough yet? They'll say this to me like every couple of days. You had enough yet? Mm -hmm. Enough, <laughs> enough? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, you sure? Because you said that last time. Um, they give me shit all the time. So, uh, yeah. So that's the thing is that, yeah. I've noticed this more in the last like year. Mm. And the thing is, people really love their patterns. They really love whatever pattern it is they're doing. They don't want to deviate from it. Mm. But some people will, and they'll, I've seen people completely change their lives in like a month. Mm -hmm. So it reminds me of a client that came to me. I can at least talk about this. Is that when my guides, she, because you know, I'll, 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 I'll rage on twin flames. But she came to me and she was like in the session and she goes, my guides are like, she's going to come to you like in the session. They go, you're going to see her one time. You're never going to see this girl again unless it's years later. She goes, I manifested my twin flame. And I'm like, mm, guides? Yes. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, and then they go, just tell her everything she needs to know. Do all the energy work on her. You'll never see her again. Maybe in a couple of years, if she ever comes back. And I was like, perfect. Fixed all the issues. She got mm. everything she needs. Mm. For Michelle. People need more and more emotional support therapy, which in turn helps them with their physical issues. Yeah, that's true. Mm. And what I find very irritating is that I feel like the brightest people are getting more of a yes than a no. The brightest people get the most shit from other people mm. in the spiritual community. I'm just going to be very controversial. Is that they shine so bright that it's like we expose the shadows in other people, even unintentionally, I'm hearing. And things they don't even want to look at in themselves. That doesn't mean I'm perfect or they're perfect or whatever. We're all humans still. 
I've seen this a lot. So like, I'm like, how is this? I'll be watching different creators on different platforms. I'll be like, how is this person getting any of these views? They don't even seem legit to me. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, well, they got good marketing. <laughs> um, I can see it. It was like, they got good marketing. They got good psychology. Makes sense. And I feel like it's something spiritual workers need to adapt is the marketing and the psychological parts of it, which doesn't feel, it feels like the marketing feels ethical to me, but the psychology doesn't. Mm. I yeah. know psychology backwards and forwards. Mm. And there is such a thing as dark psychology. And I know what I went through with TikTok months ago, um, without getting into details, because that, that stuff's over with, is that um, there was a lot of dark psychology used against me. And mm. I know psychology. I had to study it while it was happening. Cause I didn't know exactly what was going on, but I was like, all this dark psychology is being used against me, against the other people to like drag my name through the mud. And I knew exactly what was happening. <clears throat> I just couldn't do anything about it. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I've seen this has happened to me before, Jimmy. So mm -hmm. some people are just, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. I'd have people mess with me. Like some people are just really envious of them. Mm. Yeah, jealousy plays a part. Yeah. Um, um and that's a good point, what Mary said. She says, um, it's hard to remember sometimes what comes through because I mean it, it if you're channeling, I mean, we have people who channel on here um watching and we don't necessarily always remember what comes through um no. because we were somewhere else maybe <laughs> people ask me that all the time mm. and uh i'm like i have no idea what i said sometimes i remember mm. but if i'm doing 15 readings in a live on whatever app it is like i'm not gonna remember mm. i might remember bits and pieces but mm. i may remember the whole thing but usually i don't uh i'm just like i have no idea what i said Mm. So I might make an appointment and we'll figure it out. Like we can go into detail about it. I don't know. A lot of people want it really fast. I found that too in the spiritual thing. They want things to happen, just which does happen, but mm. their own development needs to happen over a course of time. Mm. So we looked at ourselves two years ago, Jimmy, till now we, we would like be laughing. Mm. And that kind of ties in with what Lauren says. Um, people want quick fixes. Yeah, it's like they want to be a psychic overnight. And I'm like, oh, it just doesn't work like that. Mm. Um, you got to really want it. <clears throat> and one thing, I know Mary wrote this, and it's no, no disrespect towards Mary at all. And maybe it was a narcissist, but I am so tired of people talking about narcissists. <laughs> um, everyone can't be a narcissist. It's that not seems... humanly possible. I know about the dark triad in psychology. I had to study it while this TikTok drama was going on. Mm. And it's a psychopath, the narcissist, and the Machiavellian, mm. or the sociopath, or psychopath, one of them. And I'm like, everyone, no one's, Mary, this is not aimed towards you. No one is like taking personal responsibility for what they've done in a relationship. Mm. Like no one's taking personal responsibility. Everyone that comes, every female and male that comes to me, like it's a narcissist. It's a narcissist. Not everyone, but a lot of them. It's a narcissist. I'm like, oh my god. Okay. <laughs> um, they can't all be narcissists. I'm sorry. There's entire channels dedicated to narcissists, and mm -hmm. I'm like, some of these guys sound legit. Most of them, I'm just like, give me a break. Hmm. It does seem it's very easy to label people um, without taking, like you said, without taking responsibility yourself um yep. and it seems to be whatever the buzzword of the moment is yeah uh, you know to the, at the moment it's narcissist in in other you know in previous times just been other words um and yeah it's just about taking res personal responsibility and that's not to say that they you know the narcissists don't exist obviously they do um but yeah. it's too easy to to just blame you can either be i suppose you can either be a victim or you can you can blame other people and well, well no sorry you can either be a victim or take responsibility yes uh, that is the key you have to take responsibility because you had a role to play in that 
I'm just going to give an example. When I was 39, uh, I, I went out with this girl. Now, it, it was a very crazy situation between us. Very, like, intense physically and emotionally. Only lasted three months, which you would say it's only three months, but it was three months. It was very intense. And afterwards, I asked my former mentor, Tim, I said, what happened? And he mm. goes, oh, interesting. He goes, it's not like it's druidy, but it's a village. You were the wizard. And she was a sorceress. The thing was, is that you, you, you killed her. You weren't supposed to. Mm. You did anyways. And you knew you weren't supposed to. And the whole point of this lifetime is she, I was like, fuck, she's going to do, she did exactly to me what she did then. But I wasn't supposed to kill her. And which I didn't, obviously. I hope she's doing well now. And mm -hmm. uh, in six years. So in that was the, that was the karma of it. Mm -hmm. Was that I wasn't supposed to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it scared her. I'm sure it scared her. But mm -hmm. um, it's a whole other story. Not, not really physically or anything. Just what I said to her. Yeah. And uh, then never talk to me again. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but... If that hadn't happened to me, I don't, I froze. Hey, Bob. Michelle says, was it batshit crazy, Thomas? <laughs> yes, it was. It was. Sorry, I froze for a second. Uh, but I was going to say, if that situation had never happened, I would have, I don't know if I would have stepped into this, like, hardcore. I was doing this part-time. Mm. That's when I, like, made a decision. I was like, I am not doing any relationships for years. Mm. Yeah, so... Yeah. I was like, let me just go down the spiritual path and see what happens. Mm. And uh, like full time or like not full time, but really take it seriously. And so it was batshit crazy. Mm. But I mean, it was her fault. Michelle um, come up with a new, uh, you know, we were talking about guano earlier while I was uh, yeah. and, used to, and uh, which is obviously batshit, uh, I think. Um, she said you should make a, a coffee brand batshit crazy coffee. Uh, yeah. Guano. They have those bats. They poop out coffee beans. They're very expensive. It's like the most expensive coffee in the world. Is it bats? Is it? I thought it was. Maybe that, it's something else. I think it was bats. I don't know. I think it was. Um, I know what you mean, though. I've seen Maybe them. lemurs or something. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Some kind of mammal. Um, yeah. But People yeah. Pay for anything, man. <laughs> oh, it's cats, is it, Rosetta? Um, it's something. I know what you mean. It's definitely bats. Oh, Kathy says it's definitely bats. Yeah, oh, you're right. Cats, bats. Um, well, was... anyway, um, I'm so sure there's a few. But has anyone got any more questions that they would like to ask before we sign off? Um, I'll just see the check that I haven't missed any actually. Um, Tara says I can see a certificate for psychiatry in your future. <laughs> just, just kidding, she says. Um, let's have a look. Psychology is always interesting. Do you think it's worth um, studying, sort of, even if it's doing a sort of a basic yeah. course? I didn't really realize how I like how much I liked it until I took it in like tech school when I was like twenty. I, I aced it. I didn't ace really any classes in tech school, mm. but mm. they just didn't interest me. But mm. um, yeah, I took it. I got like almost like one hundred on that, mm. and I was like, oh, this is very interesting. Mm. So, yeah, psychology to me is very, very, I study it a lot, especially dark psychology, because I, I see, I didn't realize it was even a thing until like eight months ago, nine mm. months ago. And uh, I, I'd heard about it, but I was like, everyone keeps talking about narcissism. What about Machiavellianism? Mm. Um, I had a friend that passed away last year, and I noticed I've been 17. And he was, uh, he had a, a master's in chemistry, but he also, he decided to become a social worker. 
So I think he got a master's in that or something. Mm. And the uh, very intelligent guy, but he was he helped so many people. And mm. so like he's like, I could teach chemistry my whole life, but he's like, I'd rather like help people. Mm. Like it's yeah. more important to me. Mm. So he's like, even though I went to school for all these years to kind of get a master's. Mm. So yeah, so like I was like he would be obsessed with like serial killers and stuff. I'd known him since he'd been 16. Mm. So like it, really crazy, kind of scared me sometimes. But the mm. point of it is, is that he's one of my best friends. So it's just, you know, whatever. We'd have long discussions about a serial killer obsession. And mm. uh, anyways, so like, but it's, it's just that psychology is so interesting to me. Mm. Like understanding why people do what they do, whether it's coming from like their, their subconscious mind, uh, whether it's coming from their childhood, mm. you got to be careful what I say I'm hearing, whether it's coming by whatever reasoning, people don't realize a lot of their patterns are from their childhood. Mm. So like studying even dark psychology, just to understand when it's used against me, because I've seen it happen more than a few times, mm. but I can catch it really, really fast now. Mm. And yeah, a lot yeah. of times people will say they want something. So let's say it's a relationship. They'd be like, I want this or that. Mm. Here, be careful what I say. So they want this or that. And I've noticed this in my own life, dating and stuff, is that I listen to what, I shut my mouth and I listen really close to what they're saying to me. Mm. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you're telling me exactly like, I remember I've heard this from like five people. They're like, I want someone to really see my soul. I don't want to be worshipped. These would be beautiful women. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you all, no, 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 no. After I saw it the first time, I was like, I got, I got, the, I got the pattern. You want mm -hmm. to be worshipped. And you're telling me you want to really want to be worshipped. That's what you're telling mm -hmm. me. Which could be a total trauma thing from their childhood. Mm -hmm. It could be from somewhere else down the line in their life. But, dear God, when I called them on it, um, cause I'll be real quiet. And then one day I'll just get kind of like this and I'll be like, well, you know, if you weren't so traumatized, you might not have this problem. Hmm. You know, why do you need to be worshiped? Why is this even important that when you're 60, is this going to matter? Yeah. You know, <laughs> exactly. um, I've got a couple of questions, but, um, Bob, we're not doing donations. We're not doing like readings. Um, but if you got a sort of a, a general question, um, like for example, Mary has asked the question: Is there a simple way of creating a protection shield? Uh, I have to teach that. Yes, there is. I don't know how to teach that. I mean, I know how to teach it. I don't know how to explain it. It's mm. like being in a live. It's like people ask me questions. And I'm like, I don't know how to explain that in five minutes. I can do it in a class though. Mm. Um, when I teach like energy class, like I'll teach people how to make shields around themselves and stuff, uh, or I'll like help them with the energy of it, but I kind of have to show them. Mm. So, uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, there's a simple way. My guys mm. are saying like, look at a book and then do what the person's saying. Mm. Uh, I've read so many books, Jimmy, on spirituality. Mm. like a hundred and I don't know how many, a couple hundred. Yeah. Holy Toledo. Um, and she says, do you feel that majority of psychic mediums have had a difficult life from childhood to adulthood? Probably, but I think everyone has. Mm. Depending, on, I've seen people who make my life look like nothing, mm. like their childhood. And other people I've, I've come across in my life that are not psychics, um, that dear God, what they've gone through. And I'm like, what I've gone through, I can't even compare this. Mm. Like some of the stories I've heard from women, I obviously can't talk about, but I'm just like, dear God, like I couldn't even imagine. Mm. Like I couldn't even imagine. Mm. What they want. Exactly. Mind you, I think this is, I mean, if you know, if you uh, have got an idea, um, then obviously share. But um, Sharonda says, what's a good hurts to listen to to hear your guides more clearly? I think that's Jimmy's question. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sharonda, um, it depends. 
in what respect if you just want to hear your guides just connect to them then i'd say either the heart frequency um so say any any frequency on the 639 solfeggio scale or the frequency for the thymus or the higher heart which is just a note above the which is also on it's actually also on the heart frequency scale um but it's just one above the heart frequency so i would say the the heart solfeggio frequency which is 639 hertz so any any note on that scale um would would do well because i feel like the this is the connection i know we have like say for example the pineal gland and the crown chakra um and the third eye they sort of seem to be our connections to the higher realms um or different those, those sort of dimensions um and you can try that you, you can use them as well but for actually our guides because they're aspects uh of us and they're connected to us um i feel like using those frequencies will connect us to them more easy easier whereas the 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 sort of the pineal gland the third eye the crown chakra they're for connecting to sort of a more of a, a collective more of a sort of everything uh yeah. frequency um whereas the guides are more personal so we want something that's personal to us and obviously our heart is the is the hub shall we say of our being so using something like that um if you go to my channel other or healing on facebook uh, and on youtube um there's some heart chakras uh frequencies there um and there's also a few other ones there as well which you can have a look at so you can try any of them um, and see what you think yeah. i hope that answers your question you're welcome mary um mary says thank you for your time and energy and knowledge um you're welcome shonda uh right question from bob bob says how do you learn how to clear your karma <laughs> i don't know um you just live your life and i think a lot of the people that you come in contact with like it clears their it clears out karma or i mean i don't know your best friend could have been your wife in a past life could have been your your wife could have been your daughter like it, it, it's so crazy so mm. so many different avenues of how this works mm. that i think you just live your life and then clear as you go Hmm. what i think happens sometimes are things repeat so i'd say this without getting myself in trouble so i think sometimes situations i've been in have happened in the past other past lifetimes so i've seen like one in particular and i think it just depends on i don't know the karmic aspects of it hmm yeah like some situations that i don't i don't i'm like trying to figure it out i'm like why is this happening mm. and then i ask and i see something from a past lifetime and i'm like oh jesus um this happened before so like i think it's up to all what i'm getting is i'm channeling a little bit it's up to all parties involved mm. to do edgar casey had a very interesting case study so when he was reading someone essentially a family it's edgar casey on karma on audible Mm -hmm. And he was reading for this like person. He goes, your family has reincarnated for the last like, it was either like thousand or 10,000 years over and over again, just to get along with each other. <laughs> That's all just to get along with each other. That's it. Yeah. Nice. That was the whole point of their reincarnation was just to get along with each other. <laughs> Brilliant. No. Bob, um, I've got a two word answer for you actually pay attention yeah that's how you learn to clear your karma well in my opinion pay attention yeah. it's I know. That go right to you don't do it so mm -hmm. like i mean but at the same time if you feel excited about it any aspect do it mm. well not excited but you get my point like if it gives you drive or something mm. yeah um i'm not sure is that is this you ada um 
someone uh, says just for, says Facebook user, but says when you meet someone, can you tell if they are psychic? Yeah. Mm. Uh, usually everyone's psychic. Still, mm. uh, there are people that have more of an ability than others. Mm. There was a girl in Louisiana I met, and I really wish I could keep track of her. Uh, she's kind of fallen off Facebook and stuff. Mm. And she want to answer my phone calls. So, but when I first saw her, I was outside late at night, like at 2 a.m. walking to the, the gas station. It was close by this hotel I was at. And I looked at her and I was like, you're psychic. And she was just totally like blown away. She's like, what? What? She's like this 24 year old girl. And I was like, you're psychic. And she was like, what? And I was so like, like, uh, what's the word? Uh, shy about it because mm. I didn't really want to talk to her. I did, but I did. Mm. And uh, so she was like, well, what are you talking about? I was like, I can see it all over you. Like I can see it, like see all this stuff. And she was like enthralled with me after that. So, mm. but, cause I don't think anyone had ever noticed it before, mm. <clears throat> but like I'd beeline towards her. And then after like two minutes of conversation, I just walked away. <laughs> I was like, I have to go. Yeah. <laughs> cause I was like, this is making me uncomfortable. <laughs> so um, I didn't tell her that until later, but yeah. So yeah, I can see it a lot of times. I see it on a lot of people. Uh, it just depends on what they're willing to do with it. I've seen clients that are have no idea how psychic they are. They have no idea. Uh, and just people around me. There's people I'm friends with that are... There's a friend of mine. I shouldn't mm -hmm. talk about this in here. Uh, <laughs> he's a Qigong and Tai Chi master. He's super psychic. I, I harass him all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, dude, come on, man. Like the world needs to, what you can teach. Mm -hmm. You've been all over the world learning this stuff, but he doesn't want it. You know, it's not it's not what he wants to do, and that's his free will. So, mm -hmm. yeah, totally. Question from Tara. Well, two questions. Well, three actually. On the screen. Where did I get mine? Uh, someone makes some for me. I can't tell you who. And uh, I, I wanted to bring up to her, she's probably watching, is that she was talking about, you know, getting more income streams. I was like, I think people might pay $300 bracelet for these things. Mm. They're mm. that powerful. So I haven't told her that yet, but I, I think it's a good income stream. I think people might actually pay like two hundred dollars a bracelet. So um, I took I took these things off like two days ago, and I was like, oh Jesus! I feel like a total shift in my energy because uh, right. they're encoded with all kinds of like frequencies and things they do. Each one I don't remember each one, but um, it's like when I take this off, like I won't keep this off. I'll clear it, but I'll put it right back on in the morning. So. I think for you, Tara, whatever you're drawn to, go into a crystal store and just look at the crystals. That's what I'm saying. Or like a crystal convention. There's lots of them floating around. Mm. You can find all kinds of deals on crystals and see what you're drawn to. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Go with whatever. Yeah. I know you probably heard this, um, Tara. But, um, but there is, you just, it's the same with anything, go with what you, you're attracted to. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that will be the one for you. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a sort of a, it's an easy answer, shall we say, but it's the best one. Usually the easiest answers are the best ones. Yeah, we don't, we, we try and make things complicated. And more often than not, the, 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 the easiest or the best answer is the simplest one. It's like, yeah. keep it simple. Why not? Well, my Ross used to say that keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. Like <laughs> people think I'm at like terror, dear God. They should have met her. <laughs> Half the spiritual people I know would not even be able to handle her. But she had mm. a lot of students, but she would mm. be yelling. But she'd mm. be like, keep it simple, stupid. Just mm. remember that every time you answer, ask me a question. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's the anagram. It's a lot of kiss. It's kiss, isn't it? Keep yeah. it simple. So, yeah, the yeah. end. Thing, um, and she wasn't calling them stupid. She just was saying like, mm. "That's how they operated." Mm. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, like Kathy says. Yeah. Um, 
Melanie says, seems to be a lot of people in the spiritual community breaking off from each other, sadly, but I know it's karmic or growth for one or the other. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, there's plenty of that. It's quite entertaining to me. I like to watch it. Um, I like to hear all the stories from other people because they tell me. So, um, yeah, I find it absolutely hilarious. So mm -hmm. uh, with, I never... I never, I knew that the camera thing would be a big thing when I was on Facebook, but I never thought it would reach the levels of TikTok. So even two years ago, when I first really started going live on TikTok, like it was, it was around because I saw a video pop up on my, my original, my main original account, it's not my main anymore on TikTok, is that, um, yeah, and it, and it showed me like right before I started going live and I was like, whoa, that was two years ago. It was like my how things have changed in two years mm. but yeah i see all these fighting and like breaking and drama and it feels like it's middle school to me. <laughs> but it's, it's so entertaining to listen about though when people tell me stories mm. yeah i don't have any drama in my life um so i don't you don't i don't you don't get to you don't get any entertainment from me unfortunately i try to just stay away from it but people tell me stories so i'm just like oh yeah i want to hear it tell me go ahead <laughs> i mean it's inter it's like a soap opera mm. yeah is it's like it is it's sort of like a movie or, or like whatever. days of our lives mm. i right um i think we're about done it's coming up to the two hour mark so um thank you brother that was very interesting very entertaining um and thank you everyone for your questions and for watching and we'll be back uh doing readings next week uh as usual so we'll see you all then thank you again and have you got anything you want to have you got any courses or things coming up uh i have a so what do i got psychic kitchen tomorrow at 8 p.m eastern i'm doing a free event uh, free healings. And then on Sunday I have, uh, on thomasawyer.com, my website, I've got, uh, healings, like uh, healings and activations. It's like an hour and a half on zoom. I think it's 33, 33. It's pretty cheap. My class is usually a lot more expensive than that. Mm. And that's, that's on my website. So if people want to sign up, it's on zoom. It's on Sunday at 8 PM Eastern. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bob, Tara, Rosetta, Brian, Kathy, Tara. And we'll see you soon. Au revoir. Thank you.